Okay, so welcome live and direct. Um, this is the SQL Azure class, and I'll be your professor for the next 12 weeks. 12 weeks goes by fast. Um, my name is Professor Timmy, and um, I'm excited to be your professor. Uh, today we are going to start with introduction about the class and the program so that we can get dive into the program. So I'm going to share my screen. Intro. So anytime you can't see my screen, just yell and scream, I can't see it. And that's fine. So today, like I mentioned, we are going to be looking at Azure SQL Data Cloud Engineering. Uh, my company's name is Talk Group Technologies, and this is our website. You can check it out. This is my number. You can reach me anytime. Today is week one. So we're going to talk about logistics and all of the other stuff like that. So I'm Temi Akimumi, Prof. Temi. Um, I started off as a software engineer many years ago, to over 26 years now in IT. I'm very versatile, so anything software engineering, front end, back end, networking, server, security, project management, whatever. I'm a bachelor's in computer science from UDC in Washington. I have a dual master's, master in, cyber, in software engineering, and also master in information assurance, cyber security from the of Maryland, both of them. Right now, I'm working on my PhD um, on, in advanced computing. I'm also an adjunct professor at three universities right now. You can contact me on this email, or you can um, also send me email directly through the ones I will be using to send to the class, which is a Gmail account, which is okay. And um, I love to impact and give back to the community. You will get to see all the things that we do. It's my passion. For many years, I worked as a software engineer, as a cybersecurity engineer, as a database engineer for Fortune 500 companies uh, like Noto Groman, Angelity. See, these students are calling me, they can't get in. Give me one second, please. Okay. It's back in. Um, but give me one second. Let me make sure I'm, I'm, I'm recording. So, like I said, you know, the awards, you get to see all of the awards. I love to empower. It's, I'm called to empower. I love to empower. I live to empower. I do it nonstop. And you get to see, thank God, Tutu is there. So, um, you know, so I would like to introduce yourself. One thing I want to let you know, whenever I tell you, take it to the bank, period. Do not have to, don't even think twice about whatever I tell you. That's how it is. And um, you don't even have to have background in IT to, to get a job. You don't need to have all these bachelors and masters and all that. Yes, you can get a job without this. This is how to get a job. This is a shortcut to getting a job. And part of this is what pushed me to be doing two days, two days a week program on Clubhouse, even on YouTube now, you know, to, to empower people, to enlighten people, people of African descent. Most of people are doing jobs like $10 an hour, $5 an hour job. Why? Why should you do that? You don't have to go through that. Other, other, other tribes, other, um, other culture, they empower themselves. We don't. Africans don't share information. They don't empower. They don't. They don't. Why? So this is what we're trying to do. We're trying to change this kind of concept, this kind of mindset. When you make somebody powerful, successful, that doesn't stop your own prosperity. It just makes us a better person. And because a lot of lives are attached to us, that's why we have to move. It's not for you. It's for somebody in the village, somebody somewhere that is destiny is attached to your life. So when you do all of this that you are doing now, it's not for you. You have to take a step of faith, and the Lord will, will strengthen that step. But you have to move. When you move, you, you, you don't be scared to move. When you ask, I'm scared, I don't know what to do. You're scared to move. Then there's nothing to be blessed. No things for God to bless or something. But when you take a step, as you step forward in faith, you see big back, big back up behind you. 
to guide you, to stay, because you are doing it. They said, if God said, I will bless the works of your hand. If you don't have any work in your hand, nothing to be blessed. You are just being, you are blessing, you know, that's the story for another day anyway. But I will, you need to move, take a step and move forward. Plus, I'm here to mentor you. When we started, there's no mentor. We don't have anybody to mentor us. It's only God's grace that helped us. So when I look back, I don't want anyone to go through what I went through. It was difficult, but we scaled through it. So why should anybody go through that stress? So that's why I do what I do every single day. People don't, they don't know how I did it. They don't know how I'm doing it. They don't know why, but I'm passionate about it. And I know that I have to empower and I continue to empower nonstop without looking back, without looking back. So I will allow you to introduce yourself. Uh, it's your turn. I'll start with Ade Tutu, then we move down. Um, maybe Ade Tutu, Risha, Tayo, Judith, uh, Winf Winnie Friend, Sheyi. Sheyi is there. Welcome, Sheyi. Sheyi has joined us finally. So Ade Tutu, introduce yourself. What's your name? What's your professional background? What's your goal from this class? How did you get to hear about us? And stuff like that. The floor is open, Ade Tutu. Hi, everyone. Good evening. So, um, or good afternoon, wherever you are in the time zone. My name is Tutu. Um, right now, I'm currently a cybersecurity information assurance engineer and subject matter expert. And I was a mentee. I've been a mentee under Ms. Tammy for over five years now. Uh, my background um, degrees are in biology, general biology health education and master's in public health. Um, I was making $14 an hour and I was making, then I was making $22 an hour, $23 an hour at a call center when I started taking Ms. Tammy's class, but I was very stressed out and I didn't have a job security and I was living paycheck to paycheck. So when I took Ms. Tammy's class, I took her Certified Authorization Professional Class, CAP, and I took her CompTIA Security Plus and her CISA, Cybersecurity Vulnerability Management Classes for Vulnerability Assessment, Risk Management Framework, and she basically helped me to navigate my way into the tech and software field. And now I work as Information Security, Information Assurance Engineer, Cybersecurity um, Subject Matter Expert. And I've been doing that now for over two years now. Mm. And mm. Um, yeah, I've had many opportunities and positions prior to even getting any certifications, like prior to getting, prior to taking the exams, I've been offered many job opportunities and including clearance. And I just wanna say I'm grateful for Ms. Tammy. Thank you so much for Ms. Tammy. You saved my life from economic depression, and I really appreciate you. Thank you. And I'm taking this class just to enhance further my skills. I'm always trying to learn the latest, the hottest new jobs. And even according to Forbes, um, there are over 80% of jobs in the year 2030 that are, haven't even been claimed, haven't even been identified yet. So there are going to be more jobs in the tech field that haven't even been defined yet. Um, there's, you know, we're moving into a world of not just digital, we're moving into the cloud. We're talking about machine learning, data science, um, you know, data engineering. We're talking about virtual reality, artificial intelligence and augmented reality. So there's so much money and so much security in technology and the software industry. And I'm just here to take over. Thank you. My name is Tutu again, and I'm done speaking. Thank you. Yes, Tutu, welcome. Thank you for joining. Yeah, like I told you, this is for real. I'm telling you, you don't have to have IT background. You are in the right place. You'll be mentored. You'll be trained. Once you are my student, you are my student for life. I don't care. Anytime, any day, I'm there to help you. And um, Richard is next. Welcome. Thank you, Ms. Damien. Uh, can you hear me well? Yes, yes. Live okay. and direct. <laughs> so my name is Richard. Um, originally from Ghana. I've been in the state for three years now. 
And uh, I have my degree in uh, banking and finance from, uh, from Ghana. So when I moved to the States, everybody was telling me, I know they don't take you know, degrees from outside a country, blah, blah, blah. So I, I made a plan that I have to settle in, you know, find some job to do, find the state I want to stay. And then I look at, you know, going to do my master's, you know, just to get into the, the American economy. So I've, mm -hmm. I've been taking it one step at a time. And I, I mean, I realized that, you know, with all these student loans and all the, I realized no. that I don't, I don't want to go that, that route. So I discovered that tech is a, you know, it's a, it's a good field. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've been looking for somebody who can train me. Everybody is saying I will go learn it on your own, but I don't believe in that because if I go and I learn it and, you know, I get a job and something happens, what am I going to do? So I've been, I'm trying to, you know, do my research. And one, one day I joined, I don't know which clubhouse I joined, but that's where I, I saw your profile and I said, okay, let me follow this lady. I'll, I'll text her later. And, and follow me around. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So you, when you started your, your room and I was like, okay, let me join. So that was the first time I joined. I was like, okay, I think this is the right person for me. You know? So yeah, I, right now I'm just looking to make that six figures, you know, that's, that's right. <laughs> No problem. Yeah. I, 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 was, I will tell you a testimony about I for this Siku Saba class, mm -hmm. I trained two guys. Tutu knows them. Um, two guys from the same family. Uh, Yomi and um, his brother. Dami. Dami and Yomi. I trained them Siku Saba. We did actually five friends from the from. Five of them, they are all young. They are like 20 something. Five. They all got a job. The two boys got a job from the same family in the one December like that. And on and on and on. This, this is Siku. Siku is a skill. Once you know Siku, you are done for life. Mm. Oh my God, it's better. It's, it's, it's real hands-on skill that you're going to learn. And it doesn't change. You use the same sequel for Oracle, you use the same sequel for, and it's, it's not difficult. It's easy. I'll show you how to do it. Okay? Yeah. Okay, Tyler, you are next. <laughs> Good evening, Mr. Me. Good evening, Good evening Tyler. Yeah, I hope you can hear me. My name is uh, Tyler, and I'm from uh, Nigeria. Um, my background is then I had my BS in industrial chemistry um, and my okay. experience since has been in sales. I have about 16 plus in sales. Okay. And this one that I'm switching to IC, I don't know. I'm assuming it will be, I will cope easily. It's not it was my friend colleague that oh. introduced me to Miss Timmy. Yeah. And I think yeah. he said, no, no, I will enjoy the class than you. So yeah, I know. I, I guess know I'm in the, in the right. <laughs> yeah, you are. The right you form. have no one ever. I've known Wale forever. So I mentor Wale. Yeah. So welcome. Welcome. Thank you. Yeah. Let's see our beautiful ladies down there. Um, Judith, introduce yourself. I will do the big man next, she. Hi, everyone. Hi. My name is Judith Lanza Kanga. I'm from Central African Republic. I have a um, background. I've been in this country for ten, almost 10 years now. But when I came, I chose to work in the healthcare. So I've been working as a pharmacy technician for eight years now. And two weeks ago, I was, I was sharing with my friend that I think since the pandemic, I think being an IT and working in the healthcare setting is a, is a plus, but mm -hmm. I'm tempting to get some knowledge in the, um, in the IT. And she said, oh, I know somebody and that I think 
it would be the good start to get the training there. And she connected me with you. And I hope I'm going to enjoy it. And I hope I'm going to get the new skills through um, the IT. That's why I'm here. Oh, Judith, welcome. You will not regret it. We enjoy the class. You you look back after 12 weeks and be like, wow. It's actually 10 weeks, but I'll give you extra because I'm introducing some other things that are fun to have. And one of my students said, oh, Miss Timmy, thank you for introducing this too, because this is powerful. It's Power BI. You know, normally you can just do SQL class and get and be okay, but I decided to introduce cloud and also introduce Power BI because those are powerful. Very powerful tools to have. So you're welcome. Thank you. Okay, Sheyi, welcome, introduce yourself. I know you've been waiting for this class forever. <laughs> yeah, good evening. Good evening. I'm Shay and I'm from Nigeria. I I moved down um, to the US um, in 2017 and I have a background in business management. And I'm currently in school for health information management. So, but I've been working in customer service. I currently work with um, Bank of America. So I just do customer service. Mm -hmm. But it is not as fulfilling as uh, my friends that are in tech, you know, and when I look at, you know, and how much I work, they don't get to work as much as I work and they still make more than I make. And, and so when I, we're having this conversation with my friend on Clubhouse and he was saying, oh, I have, I have a contact in case you need. And that was when I reached out to you. And yeah. I, yeah. So this is totally new for me, but I'm really excited. And hey, Clubhouse is working, okay. Sammy. <laughs> <That's, laughs> the Clubhouse. <laughs> you have a Clubhouse. Uh, what is Clubhouse, please? Uh, Clubhouse is an app that you get to meet and discuss about different things. So it's like a podcast. It's like you are on YouTube, but it's only audio. So you get to stay there and discuss, and there are different rooms. You just enter any rooms that you want. But you have to have iPhone to be able to download the app. Do you have iPhone? You can have iPad if you have as long as iOS. But why must it be on iOS? But that's not fair. Because it's still in it's still in beta, and I think so. Basically, it's an social experiment right now. No, no. So it's a social but, experiment. Yeah. It's exclusive. And it's a social experiment. They're trying, it's still in beta, so they're testing. And I think they want to see how much it's going to be successful. And they just recently updated the beta version of Clubhouse. You can attach your, uh, you can get paid. So you can get donations and tips from your room and, uh, and it's attach it to Stripe and get paid. So right now it's just a social experiment. Everybody doesn't have access to get paid. I don't know if Miss Tammy, you can get paid from your room and get tips from people, but they're testing it out now. So I think eventually it will be available on Android and Windows maybe, but like right now they're still testing it. And because when they're testing things and releasing things, they do it like in slow process, I think. So maybe okay. that's why. I'll, and you know, of course, Apple is gonna I'll be first and, and everything. Don't worry. I mean, yeah. you ah. can just, just, just get like a you get iPad. A, yeah, iPad or iPhone. Okay. That's fine. Uh, and um, what I'm doing now is that whatever we do on my clubhouse, I try to put them together. I'm, I'm, I'm developing a, 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 a portal, a, a school online a course. It's called my IT university. So you get you can get to access those material. What we are doing on Clubhouse, Tutu is my co-moderator. Like I tell, like I told you, when I see a good student, I, I pick them. Tutu follow me everywhere. Tutu is always with me on Clubhouse. She is always up there. And I'm showcasing her. Anything I do, I showcase her. Because I want the world to know about her as well. So it's not only about me, it's about people that are ready. And that's it. That's how I roll. So, so you're welcome, yeah, she. Winning friend, uh, welcome, introduce yourself. Let's see your face for at least for today. <laughs> if we can, if not, that's fine. So that when I see you in Costco, I know it's gonna pay for the grocery. <laughs> Is winning there? Okay, we'll come back to winning friend. Maybe come, I think he said, she said she can uh, unmute on, on, uh, herself. 
Okay, that, oh, I don't know what's going on with that. I think it would have right it now. somewhere, yeah, if it's a phone. Hmm. I don't know what's going can, on. Can you, can you okay. unmute her? Okay, well, I tried to, but, um, hold on, I don't know what, um, well, I don't think I can unmute her. Normally, I should be able to unmute her, but for some reason, let me see. It's pretty much giving me the, oh, oh damn. Um, hold on. Oh, that was Judith. She just did. That? She just did, no. She just did she just when did. you do it again. Yeah, she's good now. Yes, yeah. fuck now. We can't hear you. Hmm. Something's not right. Maybe your speaker is off or something is off. But that's okay. Um, whenever you can, um, just put your introduction on the chat area. We'd we'll have loved to hear you, but we, something is not right. But that's okay. Don't worry. We we'll still get to. We are still here for twelve weeks, so we get to meet you. Okay. So that's cool. Um. So let's continue. So these are diversity classroom. Uh, some of our classes that we run in the, the pre-COVID, we, we always have always have live classroom and in person uh, online so you can see diversity in our classroom people from different background a lot of the engineers are doing very well working age is no barrier these are websites if you go to www.topgoodtech.com this is the website you will get and you see all this cool stuff that we we have the workforce leadership stem training and all of that and our words and stuff are all there. Okay. So also on our website also, you will see a lot of things, um, awards. We have awards from Congress. This is from State of Maryland, Governor of Maryland with the zeal, Governor's Volunteer Service Award. This is from Maryland uh, General Assembly. This is from the Charles County Commission for Women. Commission for Women. This is from a senator, a US Senate. This is from Congress, US Congress. And a lot, I can't put them all here. I just put some. I have from four senators. I work from four senators. I'm from Charles County um, Commissioners. Also last year, I was given the award of cybersecurity of Association of Maryland Award, the Diversity Trailblazer of the Year 2020. So this is our award, and from Diversity Award from a, a, a Excellent. And also United Nations Award is also there. So these are these are some of our flyers, the classes we offer. You know, not only database, SQL or Oracle, we have Linux, we have Cisco, cybersecurity, business analysis, office support, and so on and so forth. These are these are physical address. When we have a physical address in Lago, we have a whole suite there. And these are the numbers you can reach me. This is my email and all of that. So step up the career ladder. This one of our classes too. You can see different age groups. Uh, you can see young people. Young, this guy actually got a job right in class. 18, he's 18. This guy right here is 22, and our friend, they got a job. First interview, they got a job. These are all these three are friends. See, they're all young. But and, while they were in class, while you were teaching, or while they were still taking your class? Right when she was, he was finishing his class, he got a job. Okay. And Have so you ever had of, someone get a job while they were in your class and got a call? Yeah, you remember Teresa? Free, right? <laughs> Do you remember Teresa Tutu? Mm, no. Teresa. Teresa is a friend from actually Tutu. I trained like twenty of Tutu's friends, twenty, and 
All of them are working. Teresa is a friend to one of your friends from Cameroon. The last day of class, Teresa got a job. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I remember Teresa. I remember her. She got a job okay. with Kaiser. Yeah, yeah. So, see. So, it's not... It's a bango. It's, 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 so this is one of our classes, and this is also one of our classes. I mean, these are different classes. You can see different faces. So age is no barrier. You know, all these people that are doing well. And um, so age is not constrained. You can see different age groups on this. So what I'm showing casing here is that as soon as our family, we I don't see anybody, I, I love everybody the same way. I support everybody the same way. That's just how it is, and that's what we do. So that's the introduction part. So feel free, feel at home. Know that you are in a family. Don't feel like uh, I don't get it. You're gonna get this. This is not a big deal. Because I'm here to empower you and to give back to you and make sure it's easy um, and support you. So um, there are gonna be different ways we're gonna get these things done. I'm gonna connect to Yama, there's a there's a site called Yama. Here, oh, yeah. actually, this is my IT university that I'm doing, but uh, you guys get to see it later. Um, so let's go there. Uh -huh. So a couple of things I'm gonna be showing you today. So after the class today, this is the class I just finished. So this is the class that just finished this class, this same class that you are doing. So you are not the first and neither will you be the last. So we have a lot of mentors in front of you that have done this class before. So um, the couple, so you are, whenever we finish this class, I'm going to, um, I'm going to um, direct you to come online and um, download some files that we're gonna be using. So some of the files that we're going to be using, I'm going to direct us to it as we go. So when you come online on Yama, whenever we finish class today, I will plug in Yama. I'll send you an email. So when I create an email, what I want to do right now for me, so that I can send you email to get into Yama, I need you to send to me on, on WhatsApp. Send it to me, I'm in class. And then put your name and then put your, your email address. Say I'm in class, then your name and email address. When you do that, that will give me the email so that I can send you the material for the class for the day and also allow you to access the, the, the material to download for class. So we're going to be downloading a couple of files to set up our environment and also the textbook for the class is right here. But what we get, before we get into that, when you get to Yama, you just click, it's going to allow you to see this. These are the ones from the previous classes. It's going to allow you to see this file. You click on files. When you click on files, it takes you to this. Whenever I have any conversation or any announcement, it's going to be on here. You're going to see all this announcement here. Okay. So today, well, I'm going to start with introducing you to Sava. What is a Sava? Then we'll go and look at what is SQL. Then we'll start looking at the starting introduction. All these are here for you to enjoy. So I start with this video, which is going to introduce you to what a server is, and then we'll go from there. If you can't hear me at any point in time, let me know. What is a server? So that is the topic of this video. Now a server is basically a dedicated computer that provides services on behalf of clients, such as ordinary desktop computers or workstations. So it's a centralized machine where multiple clients connect to either over the internet or in a local area network, and they connect to a server for a specific service. So for example, that service could be to retrieve a website, to access data or email and so on. So you can see that we saw the server is sitting in the front and is giving information to all the other channels, to all the other machines, is serving them. See a server as like a kitchen. When you go to the restaurant and see everybody sitting 
on the restaurant table as different machines. And then the kitchen, somebody going into the serving area, they call them a server too. They go and dish the food and bring it to your tables. See it like that. So a server is serving all the other machines. So we have different types of server. Well, a server can be a web server, which hosts websites. It can be a database server, which hosts databases. Or it can be a mail server, which hosts mail. Or it can be a record server that hosts records like files. You understand? So there are different types of servers. So we're going to be focusing more on this class on the database server. But there will be a time that when we start talking about the cloud environment, you see us talking about setting up a web server and a database server, something like that. But when we go to that, I will explain to you. Just follow me closely and get clearer. Now, a server could be dedicated to handle one of these services only, where you would have one server dedicated for a website, one server for data storage, and a server for email. And this model is what larger organizations use. Or you can also set up a server to handle each of these services on the same machine, which is what typically happens in smaller organizations. In smaller organizations, they can decide to use one server for many purposes. They can decide to use the same server of a database for web server for mail. It's not safe because if somebody hacks to this system and they get to the database, they, they will get to the web server and the mail server and this whole infrastructure is down. But if they if you have them separately, there's chances that they will not get to the other ones. And you can see, you know, salvage and save the day. You know, so that's why it's always good to to separate them, especially when you're in production. So depending upon which setup is used, it all depends on the needs of an organization. Now, when people talk about a server, generally they are referring to a powerful centralized computer that clients connect to over a network, and they would be correct on that. However, a server is not just a physical computer. A server is actually a role that a computer takes because any ordinary desktop computer can be set up as a server and it doesn't necessarily have to be a powerful computer. So for example, you can set up a network in your home where you can have an ordinary desktop computer serve as a file server. The computer will have those files in a shared folder and then other computers can connect to it to access those files. So what we're saying here is that you can any computer can be a server. Even although if we, you need to do a lot of workload, you may need a more powerful server. You can you can just install you can just install the server software on any machine and they automatically become a server. They may not be strong enough, but at least they can do the purpose, especially for files, to store files and all that. So you can. Or you can also use a desktop computer to serve as a web server, where you would install the website data on that computer, and then the other computers can connect to it and retrieve the web page. However, desktop computers do have their limitations because they are not designed to handle a large workload, and they can't handle a lot of incoming connections from users. And this is not only because of their inferior hardware, but it's also because of software because desktop operating systems are only able to handle a limited amount of concurrent connections. Now, servers need to be up and running 24-7 because they are vital to an organization. And if a server does go down, then that could jeopardize a business or an organization. So this is why servers need to be more reliable. They need to be built with robust hardware that's able to run nonstop with little to no downtime. You see? So you see why we are important. There's a database engineer. Uh, we need, you know, our machines to be all up and running. They need us because they can't do anything without data. I always tell everybody, I don't care what, how expensive or how, um, you know, how rich or how whatever your company is doing, Data is the most important thing for any company. I, I don't care how sophisticated you guys are involved in tech. If your data is junk or your data is not protected, 
That's the gold we are trying to mine. If you see thieves going somewhere or hackers going somewhere, poking around, they're, doing, they're trying to have a data breach because they want to steal the data. Data is, a, is the end product of any, any services or any, you know, any system or any project. Data is very important. So that's why we are very, very important in any organization. So if, if everything goes down, then there's a problem. The database you need to be up. So the servers need to be up as well, whatever kind of server it is. It's always very important. So for example, a desktop would use a processor that's designed, obviously, for desktops, such as the Intel Core Series processors. And a server would use a processor designed for servers, such as the Intel Xeon processor. A server processor needs to be fast and have the ability to perform a lot of tasks simultaneously. Now, both of these processors are powerful, but there are some differences. So, for example, Xeon processors support a multi-processing environment. So, they are designed to work with other processors, which means you can put two or more Xeon processors on a motherboard designed for servers. Okay, so you can see with the, with the server processor, it's more. The component the inside the motherboard is more the CPU. Uh, because um, that's going to make it more powerful than a regular desktop. This is actually for my security plus and cyber security student. I just told it to share with you. So you don't have to worry yourself about all these details. If, if you want, you can always, it's on Yama. It's right there on our, on our class. So you can always go there and click it. So I won't bother you with that. I will just fast forward to what I want to show you about. Um, The server also needs to use a server operating system, such as Linux, Windows Server, Mac OS Server, and so on. Server operating systems are robust and stable, and they are designed to run nonstop and are able to handle thousands of concurrent connections. So, you see that. So, um, the server, they always, have, they always have operating systems. Some have Linux. Most, most of us have heard of Linux before. Some are window based, some are Mac based, you know, like uh, Mac, uh, Apple, Mac, and all that. Um, you know, so the operating system is pretty much the, like the foundation. When you want to build a house, you need to have a foundation. Without a foundation, you can't build your house on top of sand. It's not going to stand. So you have your frame. You may pretty much have the, the frame, and then you start building. So the, the, the Linux, the, the my Windows, the Mac is the base. Of the, of, the, of, the, of the machine, of the servers, so on top of which we now build everything else. Now, there are many different types of servers. And when I mean types, I'm talking about the type of service that the server provides. So for example, a web server. A web server is what hosts a website. So any website that you go to with your web browser, you are connecting over the internet to that web server to pull up the website you want. The web server will contain all of the website data, including the HTML code and graphics, and it'll also be running the web server software. Another type of server is an email server. An email server... So you see, we'll just look at the web server. It contains all the code, all the programs. And, uh, and all of that, the HTML, the style sheet, and all of that on it. When I, I mean, you know, so that's a, that's a front-end development, okay? That's more of a programmer work. The programmer does that. And I think that's some of the things that you get to some of my IT university when you start, you know, when, it, when it's launched next week. Because um, my background is software engineering, and I'm going to be empowering people in, in HTML and creating websites. We code programming scripting. You know, you see all of those fun stuff there. So that's cool. So that's the, you don't have to worry about that right now. It's just a website, the front end. You, we are working on the back end. We are more of a database person. We are working at the back. The programmers work on the front side. And I will, you see how everything is linked as we go. Another, another one is the email server that holds the email. Server is what facilitates the sending and receiving of email. And you would access the email using your web browser, or you can use an email client 
such as Outlook or Thunderbird, using email protocols such as IMAP, POP, and SMTP. Most of us use Gmail. We use Yahoo. All of those things are sitting in one email server somewhere, and they are sending it to us. You understand? So that's the email server. We use this as server. And a database server is another type of server. This type of server stores data on the back end, and then it's retrieved from computers on the front end, for example, using queries such as SQL. So these are just a few examples of what servers do. But so let's say, for example, right, you, 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 let's use this um, Facebook. We all go to Facebook. When you go to Facebook and say www.facebook.com, you are on the web server. So the web server now what it does is connect to the database server and pull out all those information. Some, some static information are on the web server that don't change, like maybe the logo, maybe the, the nice text and stuff like that. They don't change, they stay static. They are on the web server, they are on the phone. But things are changed like your, 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 your pictures, your posts, that change and all of those comments is coming from the database and it's populating it based on what you query or ask for. So you always send a request to the, to the, from the server, you send a request and you get back a response. A request, you get back a response. So what we use is called SQL to query the database. The language that database speaks is called SQL, structural query language. We'll get to see that as we go. And that's what we're going to be learning in the SQL class. So this is pretty much done. So now let's go to what is SQL. Okay, what is SQL? Let's see what SQL is. Data is all around us. We used to store data on paper in big filing cabinets, but eventually we store them online in what we call databases. How do we easily pull the data we want to look at it? That's what SQL is for. It's a language that communicates with databases. <laughs> Welcome back to Glitch, your easy insights into VOS, big data, and artificial intelligence. SQL stands for Structured Query Language. People call it SQL or SQL. In short, SQL is the name for a language that is used to communicate with databases, databases that store your data. If you want to pull, edit, add information to a database, you can use the language of SQL to do that. But how does SQL work? Think of a database like a warehouse. Data so like I said, so when you talk to the database, you use the structure query language. We're going to be focusing on database. And so we're going to go deep, dive deep into what is SQL. Uh, for, the part, for the next six weeks, we're going to be looking at how to write an SQL query, how to create the database, how to set it up, and all of that. And you will learn all the, all the commands and how to use it. And once you have that, it's for life. Then from there, we transition to the cloud and how to set it up in the cloud and how to use the cloud environment for Azure, Microsoft. Then before we now come back out and do Power BI, how to create powerful star, uh, dashboard with our queries and be able to use that to create reports for the for, for, for the executives and stuff. So you are covering three classes in one, three powerful classes in one, just to make you um you know ready for the job market. So those are extras. So okay, we are looking at now. Let's use this Lego to understand the concept. Data tables like filing cabinets, and data like files is like a warehouse. Data tables like filing cabinets, and data like files, this warehouse or database stores data. The warehouse database was built using coding languages like C++ or C or Java. Now imagine regular Lego people need to access the files. How do they do that? Option one, you... So you see, let's say for example, the database is this warehouse, and then the tables, in the database, which are objects that are built to store the data, is called they are called tables. So these tables are these shelves, and then these little Legos that are inside it are the data. So you see us talking about databases, then you see us talking about tables, and you saw see us talking about the data that are stored in those tables. So for example, if I create a table, a database called um, uh, school is school. 
database that is called a school. Inside the database will be things, what are the things I want to talk about in a school? Students. A, a table will be, called a, will be called students. Another table can be called teachers. Another table can be called um, maybe courses, right? So in the in in the in the um in the in the in the, in the, the table that is called student, what are the things you will not to know about a student? Then you start listing the the student name, the student email address, the student phone number, the student address, the student age, the student gender. All those things are data that is gonna be used. These are elements in the table that data will be stored inside it. So we're gonna break it down more as we go. It's very easy and straightforward. You could have a storefront built to the warehouse so that customers can ask for files, add files, delete files. But essentially this means you are building something that takes a lot of time, money. In the real world, this is the equivalent of building a whole app just to access the files in the database. As to so when you see people building apps most of the time, like Facebook and all of that, like uh, Instagram, they're pulling from the back, the data in the back. So also you can also use an analogy. Let's say you, you go to a warehouse, a physical warehouse, and then you have shelves in that warehouse, and then you store your luggages inside the shelves. These are like data. When you want to retrieve it, you go to the front desk and ask them to fill out the form and retrieve your data. So that's this. You so when you retrieve your data, you are writing a query to say, okay, this this data I want, and I want this I want this database, I want this in this particular database, I want this table, and in this particular table, I want this file, this data from the table. So you can specifically go to that particular um, uh, database which you are already in. Then you will be able to go and locate the tables by your script, and then be able to get the fields and retrieve the data. It's very easy to straightforward because it's just like you are talking. It's a language. Okay? SQL comes in, which is the second option, SQL. This is like you hiring a specialized delivery translator. Her name is Sally SQL. She knows how to talk to the database and she knows how to speak in the language of SQL. So if you learn to speak SQL, then you can ask her to get files for you. Okay, so how do you speak Sally's SQL language? Here are the requests you can make. If you're a Lego mayor and you want to know the name of your citizens, you'll ask Sally SQL, select name from Lego people. The request is select name, that column, from Lego people, which is the name of the table. These are, these are a sample of tables. These are tables are structured. This one now, the table is called Lego people. What do you want to know about Lego people, name and their age? So now name and age are components of the table and the table is called Lego people. So inside it, you have names stored. Sarah, Sarah is 80, Greg is 25 and so on and so forth. So when you query this, this database now, you say select name and age from Lego people. Select name and age from Lego people and it's gonna select Sarah, select all of this. But if you want to now decide to, to kind of filter the select, you can now say, where age is 80 or where name is Sarah. It's very easy and straightforward. You get to understand it as we go. Table. Or if you're a Lego doctor and want to know the name of citizens that are higher than three centimeters, you would ask Sally Sequel, select me from Lego Heights, where centimeter is greater than three. She returned two Lego people, Sarah and Craig, because their centimeters is greater than three, and she pulled from the name column within the table called Lego Heights. Or if you're a statistician and you want to know both the height and age combination of citizens, but this data is stored in two separate tables, here's what you'd say to Sally SQL. Not all tables are found. Yeah, I'll just pass so all do it all. So here are three things own. you need to remember about SQL. One, SQL is the one language you probably should learn. If you are in business or marketing or sales or anything that you wouldn't normally think you need to learn to code, SQL is the one language you probably should learn. The reason why is because most companies nowadays have an online presence and are keeping records of data on a database. So the more you know how to communicate to this database and pull data, the better you can be at your job because now you can pull the data, analyze it. Two, SQL languages have variations. Different companies with different data SQL databases have different SQL syntaxes. There's small variations, 
So it's the equivalent of having different Sally SQL bots with different accents. Three, SQL only speaks to a specific kind of database called a relational database, which is essentially a database. So we're saying that SQL is very important. It doesn't, add, it doesn't matter if you have what you're doing. You, you, when you, go, you, you can go to an extent where you work with on, under uh, Excel, you can pull data from Excel. You will see that when we start doing Power BI, you can pull data from Excel, you can write SQL. You can pull data from Asset Database with SQL. You can pull data from Oracle Database with SQL. You can pull data from SQL Server with SQL. You can pull data from um, MySQL. You can pull data from um, SQL Compact. You can pull data from uh, um, MariaDB. You can pull data from Progress and all of those things with SQL. You know, so SQL is very important for all relational databases. Even though we have some some databases these days now that use no SQL, no SQL, that they are different. But um, this is the most important and the most comprehensive and most powerful. All organizations use SQL. Okay. Yeah. So I will let that be, so we can get into today's program. So that's all, that's all. And you get to come here and we have some, some other videos that you can also look at. These are the videos are for week two. So let's go into today's, um, to, the, um, to the information of today. So as we go, you're going you're gonna to be pulling this data and I will give you all the information. This is a S-square A all files. When you put this S-square all files, it's add all the table information about how you're going to pull the data for the tables to create the database we run it and you pull these two files too the two files so i'll give you all the information where are the two files yeah they are here so this this you're going to download all of all of this you're going to download this uh files i'll send you information and instruction how to pull it download this so we can set it up and we're going to be doing some of those things also next week so while we're doing that, this, this uh, e-book SQL Server for, for engineers is a book that we're going to be using for the class. So make sure that um, you can download it. It's PDF. It's a powerful book. You don't have to buy it. I think it costs like $50, but you have it here for free. So you can download it. When you just click it, click on download, and then you can follow it. We're going to be following this gradually in class. While we're doing that, um, I'm also going to be sharing with us the uh, the class schedule. So we're going to be doing. So we're gonna be doing like um, you know, I hope you can, if you can see my screen at any time, let me know. You know, introduction to relational database and SQL, how to use the uh, the management studio, and then how to retrieve data from the tables, how to retrieve data from two or more tables, how to code and all of that. So we're gonna be going through that, and uh, I will send you a comprehensive because we have some other ones for the Azure area so we have the azure and also for the uh the uh cloud and also the sql environment as well so you get that in inside yama for the syllabus the comprehensive one about the class uh when you pull the data so there are a couple of things here you're going to be seeing and um, that's what's going to help you to set up the environment yeah, so these data are here. The data are here. So if you open it, you will see when you click it, you will, these are three things you're going to be pulling. When you click this SQL, all files that I just showed you, it's going to be a, um, it's going to be, um, um, what's it called? It's going to be a zip file. So you, all you have to do is download it. And then when you download it, you, come, you, you, um, you um, open it up. So let me show you for one second. So in case 
You're trying to do that and you get confused. But I'm going to show you how to do that. So when you come here, you right click this. You actually click this and click on download, right? When you click on download, it will download. So when it downloads, it's going to be in your, you click it, it opens up. It's probably going to be in your download folder. As you get to your download folder, right, you right click it and then click on extract all. Okay? So when you click on extract all, it's going to extract and you just extract. So it's extracting it for me right now. After extracting, you will have all these files. So when you finish extracting, it's, not, it's still under my download, right? So let me go back to my download. You will now see two files. One is a zip file, so it says compress zip. Don't worry about that. That's the one you download. You can use that unless it's extracted. Once it's extracted, click on the extracted one. Then you will see SQL Server 2016. That's the version we're using, which is okay. You have the database files. These are the files we are going to run to create the environment. So we're going to create the environment. So we're gonna run all of this to create the environment. We're gonna do that next week, okay? We create all our environment and be able to run our script. Uh, or just make sure you download this. What you are gonna do is that you will we'll call this file to set up our environment. So this and this and this actually. We can even do it this weekend so that we are, we'll be ready for next week. I think we should do it this weekend so that we'll be ready for next week actually. So when you download this, you have one, two, three, okay? So follow me closely, one, two, three. So these are the databases that we're gonna be using, create AP, create example, and create product. So these are scripts that's already here, okay? So it's there. Then we have that download. That's one thing, the three of them, okay? These are exercises. Exercises for, from the class. These are exercises from the class. Okay, showing us details about exercises from the book. And then we also have scripts that we're going to be running by each exercise. All the scripts that we're going to be using is here. So it's already written for you to guide you. That book is actually very good because I use it to teach in university. And I love their books. Their books are excellent. Okay, we have all of that ready to go. So when you download, you'll see that. The reason why I'm showing you all of this is that so that when you are when when you, you are by yourself and you're trying to see how to run this, you all you have to do is just come to this video because you have access to this video, play the video, and then use this video to um to to guide you. And another good thing we're gonna be doing, you are not just gonna be in this class for nothing. They'll every week you guys need to meet. And I don't want to forget that we always meet. So every every class, um, there will be a group lead, leader. I don't know which day you guys are gonna be doing that, but we need to talk about that now as we get deeper into discussion. Um, somebody will be the group lead, and then you start thinking about this which day you guys are gonna be meeting. So you will you will have studied the material, then you come together and meet and discuss at least for one hour. You discuss about everything we talk about in the class. You look at whatever I gave you as own work assignment. If anybody's having a problem, you all work together to solve it. If you can't solve the problem, then you escalate it to me. And then I'll see what I can do. But you have to pick one day in the week where everybody would meet because we are not everybody will be on the same face in classes. Some people are faster, some people are slower. But we have to help ourselves. And one thing you have to know is that when you help all that, you're helping yourself because you know it more. So always know that. So I need you to start thinking about it. I will need a team lead, and I will need a day that you guys want to meet, okay? And also, before I forget, I don't know if you guys sent it to the group um, on words of that um, you are here, because if I don't get your email, you're not gonna get any of this material. So I don't think anybody did this. So go on, yeah, please go on. Um, What's up? And put in there, I'm in class. Then put your name and email address. I, I think I see Richard doing this right now. 
So everybody should do that, please, because that's what I'm gonna be using to send the material to you guys. Okay, uh -huh. so that's very important, thank you. So that's one thing. So let's go back to Yama. Yama will be your best friend because all our material will always be there. So that's one thing. So you're gonna download that as well as, like I mentioned, you're gonna download the, um, the uh, two files that you're gonna be installing. You're, you're gonna download the SMS uh, setup, um, and you second download, there's a fourth download too. There's a fourth download, where is the fourth download? So everything I will, I will send everything to you in the in the in the book in the uh, instruction, so you can download both of them and in, in, download them, and then install them on your machine and just set it up. I'll give you instruction for how to set it up as well. So you see everything here tonight. When you come here tonight, you'll be able to get access to those files, and um, and then we'll go from there. Yeah, excellent. So while we're discussing that, let me find the material for the uh, for the book so that we can discuss the book. Are you guys following me? Yes. Yes. Not difficult, don't worry, you get it. Okay, excellent. So this is the book. It's 696 pages, but you don't have to worry about that. We're not gonna, it's just for you to have. There's a lot of material in it. It's training and reference manner. Once you have this book, you have it for life. And if you want, you can have the hard copy, but uh, you don't have to have the hard copy. So today we're gonna be looking at chapter one and two. Um, we're looking at at introduction to SQL, and these are the table of contents. Let me just scroll down. You can also use this, um, so you can click on where you are going directly. It takes you there. Okay, and you can zoom if you don't know to. You are not very familiar with it. You can zoom in and zoom out. Okay. So we're starting from one and introduce to relational databases. So this is how this thing is set up, right? So on the four, on, on, on one side of the page is a written introduction about what you will see in the second page. So page, the first page, if you open the book, right, this page will be discussing what is shown here, always in this book. So this page is like, a summary of what is written on this page. So student can use this as a, as a reading manual, an instructor can use the site as a reference manual, as a training manual, you understand? So it's the same thing. So what are we seeing here? We're seeing what I just showed you, a simple client server system. We are showing us a sim simple server system, a client server system, whereby you have your, your database server, and it's connected to some client machine, your machine, your, your, your mobile phone, your iPad, whatever, is connected through a network. The network can be the internet, which is the internet that we all know, or it can be uh, an inside, inside, uh, inside intranet for the company, okay? It can be any house set up. You are connected to a database where you can pull your data. So there are three hardware components of a client server system. The client are the PCs, the Mac or workstation of the file. So these are all your clients. Anything that you can use to access, access through a network or through, uh, through um, a database or through a, a web browser, maybe when you, when you use Google Chrome or you use um, Internet Explorer and all of that to connect to database or to the to online, those are your clients. It can be your phone, it can be even ATM machine. All those are clients because you're using it to connect to the backend, to the data, to the database or whatever. So clients are your PC, your Mac, your workstation of this system. A server is a company that stores the files. We just saw the videos, right? 
and database of the system and provide services to the client. When a store database is often referred to as database server. When a store mail is called what a mail server. When a store website is called a what a web server, right? So that's how it is. So the network comes and when it stores um, files, it's called a file server, right? So the network consists of cabling, communication lines, and other components that connect the client and the server together. So the client and server system implementation. In a simple client server system like the one shown above and the one we have seen before, the server is typically a high power PC. You remember we saw that? That communicates with the client over a local area network. The area web network that is local to the organization is an enterprise organization and it has a local area network that is local to us only. All of, everybody in that organization will use it. Like I, as a small business, in my office, we have a local area network because it's local. It's not connected to any other cities or metropolitan uh, Litton area. But we have some, if we have something for a county or for a state, then it's become a what? A, uh, a, a, a wide area network one. Okay. So a server can also have a mid-range system like IBM or Unix or Linux and all of that. Those are operating systems. The special hardware and software components are required to make it possible for clients to communicate with these mid-range systems. So also a client server system can also consist of one or more PC system, one or more mid-range system and all of that. When you have all of this set together, it becomes an enterprise system. So when you work for the county, when you work for the state, when you work for even on the internet, it is it's, it's all the way, it's global, it's bigger. So, um, because it's more than a local area now, it's become an enterprise system. It's for the bigger organization like Deloitte, Northrop, and all of that, they are enterprise. So individual system land can be connected and share data over large private network, such as, such as a one or public network like internet, we call it a wider area, wide area network. So the um, software component of a client and tower system. So we, cover, we already cover most of this in the video, which is that's a video. That video is great. The client software, server software, and SQL interface. I mentioned to you before that when you have a client, you are connected to the database server, the client and the SQL server. The client will send your query, which is discussed that I mentioned to you, the language that database understand is called SQL query. When you send, when you're querying the, query the database, you get the result back, right? So application software data access, we use API, application programmable, uh, programming interface, we get to that. So that's how we connect through that to pull data. So server software, to store and manage the database of the client server system, each server required a data management system called the DBMS, like Microsoft SQL Server. So, so the, the Microsoft SQL Server is the database that we're going to be using in class. It's actually right here on my system, and we'll get to open it and see what it is. And that's what you're going to be storing with those uh, scripts and those files I told you that you're going to be downloading. One, two, and three. It's three of them. Two is for a setup, and the third one is just the file that we're going to run to set up the environment. The processing that's done by DBMS is called referred to as back end processing. So database management system is does what we call the back end processing. And database server is referred to as a back end because it's at the back of the system. When you go to the ATM machine, you put in your information and it retrieves your data from the back. So in in all the cases, you don't know where the data is coming from, but it's coming from the back end. It's called the database. So this database at the back and the client is in the front. Okay. So client software, the application software does the work that the user wants to do. This type of software can be purchased or developed. You know, we always purchase or develop software. You may want to buy it because it's already on the shelf, 
or we may have to ask some software developer to develop it for us. Some of us, most, most people say they work in purchasing, like, like tire, uh, product purchasing and stuff. You use software in your company. Some of us use software at, that work for, for like um, timesheets, right? And some other things that you will use software for. These are developed by developers, software, they call application software. And this day we hear people talking about app, app, app. Everybody uses app. Because it's either you use the app for to retrieve, to, to even to do deposit in your banks and stuff. All these are apps. They are built by developers. The data assets, API, application programming interface, provide the interface between the application program and the DBMS. So between the application program and the DBMS, there is a connection, okay? If you are the newest um, program, uh, uh, Microsoft API is ADO.NET. As a software engineer for many years, we I do a lot of .NET programming, C Sharp, Visual Basic, uh, C++, F Sharp, and whatever. So when we connect to the data at the back, we use something called the ADO.NET, which is the connection to the database. It helps us to connect to the database, which can communicate directly with the SQL Server. So there are other API in the old days. We used to use ADO or DAO. They are just drivers and they're OLADB, which is the database um, object or ODBC. This might sound like Spanish to you, <laughs> but it's for real. This is how you communicate the database, you know, from the front end, but you don't have to worry about that because you're not gonna be, you're not a programmer. You don't have to worry about that. The process that is done by client software is typically referred to as front-end processing. So people that sit in the front, they do the front-end. We do the back-end because we are database engineers. And the client is typically referred to as a front-end, okay? So this is the front-end and that's the back-end, okay? So that's how things are done here. And then the query, so when we are sending communication, communicating, uh, the application, the software, which is the front end, is communicating with the back end, which is the DBMS. We use something called the query language like we saw before through the data access, the API, right? And then we are get, sending a query and we're getting back a response or a result. So the SQL stands for structured query language, which is the language that we use to communicate. Okay. So in a client server system, the processing is done by typically dividing between the client and the server. So both of them share responsibility, front and the back share responsibility, okay? So now in the window-based environment, you can see before the advent of web, web server, if we want to do everything in-house and we don't want to go through the internet, then we, we send, just send a request to the database straight, right? So, like, for example, if you go to the ATM machine, I'm not, we are not connected to Yahoo. If you go straight to the ATM, you pull it to the ATM directly. You're in the ATM network. Back of, uh, yeah, somebody will here work for Bank of America. If you, go to, if you are in Bank of America, you are not going through the internet. You are going through the Bank of America server, right? I think it's Sheyi, right? Sheyi, you are the one that work with Bank of America, right? Yes, ma'am. Uh -huh. So you, you don't go through you don't go through the internet. You just go straight through your network. Then through your network, you send a query, whatever you say, www.whatever.com. It's not going to the to the real, real internet. It might be going through the server. So you go to the application, or you just click on something, go through the application, and go to the back and pull the data for you. You understand? But if you are going through the internet now. You now have to go through the web base, to send the query to the internet, the query goes to the web server, it goes to send the query to the database, and it comes out with results responding back to you. So in whatever way you can still communicate to the server, it can be through your local area, through regular server, or through the internet. Okay, And this is what all of this thing is describing. Also, we're going to be looking at the components of the database, okay? So in 1970, Dr. E.F. Court developed a model for a new type of data called the relational database. 
This type of database eliminates some of the problems that we are associated with, standard file and other database design. Please do yourself a favor. Make sure you read chapter one and two of this book this week so that we prep you and give you a good, strong background. When I give you this book, make sure you read it. This book is a really, really powerful and good book. Don't do a job of being lazy and saying, I'll do it later. If you are learning a new subject, you need at least one hour of your day every day to sit on that. that. I don't care what you will do. I don't care if you sit on it all night. One hour, take one hour. There's no way you will not get one hour or two to sit on it. So that's, that's the secret. It's gradually, okay? But you have to sit on it to be able to, to digest it and absorb it and assimilate it. Whatever you love to do, you have to love, to, you have to be hungry enough to be fed. If this is the class that you come to and you just play and just relax, you will not get anything out of the class except for what I told you. It's good that I'm recording it, but I, I'm sure you will not be that kind of person. So I plan to encourage you that this week, I need you to at least read chapter one and also look at chapter two. Chapter two is just how to use it, how to use the management studio, which you are going to look at. So this is how things get started. It's very fun. It's very, it's, it's very good. And the good thing is that this is hands on. As you see things, as you practice and you see your results, the results are also here. You get excited and try to do more, which is great. So how are database tables organized? I'm going to look into that. So you can see here, when you have a database, for example, this database now is called the AP. It's in that, in, in that script that say you would download. You see one, one called AP. AP stands for Account Table Database. In the Account Table Database, you will see things in it. So we open it up, the database, and we look at a table called, this table is the vendor table, for example. Vendor table, in the in the in the database, when you're talking about account payables, people some of them say they have accounting background, which is great. What do you see in an account table? Use vendor information. You see invoices. That's Tayo, right? Tayo, you are the one that did banking and accounting, right? No, it was, it was me. No, no. Oh, it was uh, Richard. Yes. Okay, so. You, 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 in, in, in an accounting environment, you see vend if you are working, like for example, for Costco, you see vendors, you will see invoices, you see receipts and all of that, right? So this yes. is an example of vendors table. A vendors table in an account table database, we have things like vendor ID, vendors name, vendors address, maybe they have a, 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 maybe suites or whatever, then vendor city, vendor state, ven vendor phone number, vendor email, we just cut it off. But this is an example of what it is, so you can see it. And if you look at it, it looks, it looks like what? Well, it looks like an Excel sheet, right? Like a worksheet, isn't it? So this is what a table is, just a worksheet, but it's stored. You know, it's like, it's like, a, it's like an Excel, it's in like an Excel format. That's what it looks like. So you can see here, the vendor ID is the primary key. What is the primary key? And we have, all of these have columns, like, the name, the, the, all of these are columns. So all the elements and the entities of a table that are in it, like ID, name, address, um, all of that, city, state, all of those elements, they call, we call them columns or fields. And all the records that we saw in there, for example, in this class now, we have, if I want to do a school database, and then I say I want to do a table called student, I will be looking at student ID, student name, student address, student city, state, phone number, email address, and all of that. So all those things are called fields or columns. And then I'll see records. In the record, I will have ID number one. I can say uh, uh, student name, added to two. Address, I'll say the address. That's a record. One record is a row on that table. Number two, I can say Richard, your address and all that. That's the second row. That's the second row. That's a record, and it's also a row. Number three, I can say tire. That's a row and a record. Number four, I can say winning friend. Number five, I can say Jane. Number six, I can say she. If I say all of that, those are rows and records on this table. That's just what it is. And everybody will have a unique ID that's called a primary key that is unique. 
No two persons will have the same ID because that is how I'm going to track you. You understand? So that's what it is in a nutshell. A relational database consists of table. Table consists of rows and columns, which can also be referred to as records on fields. A table is typically modeled after a real world entity such as invoices or vendor. So a column represents some attributes of the entity such as the amount of invoices and the, the address and vendors information and so on and so forth. So this is what you are seeing here. The intersection of a row and a column is called a cell. So where they intercept. So like number 12 now is a cell. This city of uh, Fenso is a cell. This null is a cell. So where the two of them meet, this single, single box is here. They are cells, each are cells. So most tables are the primary key, which are unique. They are unique identifier, okay? And the primary key is usually a single column, which is a column. This is a column, right? But it's also consists of two or more columns. If a primary key uses two or more columns, it's called a composite primary key. But in most cases, you will just, you just see one column. Okay, it's just one column. And then in addition to primary key, some database system lets you define one or more non-primary keys. So, which are also unique. In SQL, these keys are called unique keys. Some keys that are unique for that particular table, like a primary key or a non-primary key, unique, identify each row in the table. So um, also a table can uh, can be defined with one or more index indexes. So indexes are a way in which you can uh, provide an efficient way to access data from a table based on the value. So when you put an index on a table, it's like a tab on the Bible. What does a tab on the Bible help us to do? When you have a Bible, it has tabs. And you can what what does it help you to do when you when you have a tab on the Bible or on any book in case you don't you don't know anything about the Bible? Page or the, the find a page fast, the word fast, efficiently. You make it fast so that you can navigate. I will not be looking at Genesis in Revelation because I don't know where it is. But you, once you look at JEN, you know, as in the beginning, you will not start uh, looking at the back for Genesis. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So that's what I'm kind of saying. That, and also, you think about the library. In the library, when you go to the library, you will notice that when you want to find a book, do you just go around and be looking every, on every aisle for the book? No, you don't. You have to go to the front desk and start, or talk to the lady or man in the front desk for the information people, or go to the database now, they make like this, they just type it in, in the index, and then it tell you, go to social and so reference, and that's where you go, go to social and so section, you'll find the book there. Because if you don't use an index, you, you, will, stay, you will sleep there, you will never find the book. <laughs> so, how the table in the relation is better related? If you don't understand anything, please don't be quiet to raise your hands and ask, just raise your hands, I will stop, or just type it in the chat, I will stop. Are, are we following me so far? Yes. It's only one person that is saying yes. So am I, am I on my own? <laughs> no, I'm here. Yeah, are you getting it? Are you getting it? That's what I'm asking. Um, Miss Tammy, I have a question. So, what does null mean? Yeah. What does null mean? Null means it doesn't have any information. There's no information in there. It's not zero. It just means it doesn't have any information. It's not populated with anything. Are you are you okay? Yes. When you friend, you need to type something in the in the chat area. Are you okay? Are you getting it? Do you know where the chat area is? You see an area they call chat. Type something in just let us know that you are with us. Since we can hear your voice. Can you scroll back to where that uh the the table is please okay on course on course yes good okay so i should scroll back to where the table is right okay yeah. here right oh okay somebody saying something yeah. okay what do you what question do you have okay 
No, no, no. It's concerning the question that you just answered about it's the not, that, color. It's not popular. No. It doesn't have any information yet. Yeah, we'll get to that. It's just that uh, this is just no main is empty. It's, it's totally oh, okay. nothing else. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Okay. Yeah. When you don't populate something, it's no, and and it's not zero because no it means it's not defined. For some, for some, sometimes when you when you do programs, right? When you write programs, we have to check for null no values because if you if you divide anything when you want to do mathematical calculation, and you have to say it's not null. No. That means if the table is not null, no, then do this. So sometimes we set up, we always set a default value for columns so that if it's gonna be null, no, then put zero. If you wanna do calculation. We try to set it as zeros if nothing is there. Because if we, if we have to divide or multiply or divide by null, it's going to give us error. Understand? So you see all of those things as we go. Very good questions. So it's good that I stopped. So that um, we will be on the same page. So, how, so let's continue. How the table in the national database are related? So we have tables, right? Let's say we have two tables. Okay? So table in the original database can be related to other tables by value. So we can have a table that is related to another table, one to many, okay? Or many to many. So let's look at it in this example. So we, we mentioned the vendors table, which I already looked at, right? So relation between vendor and invoice table. So every vendor will have an invoice. When you're a vendor, that means maybe you supply to me. For example, Let's say all of you are my vendors because you supply me water, some people supply my company, toilet throw, another person can supply my company, uh, uh, um, you know, sodas or whatever. You supply me something and then I have to issue invoices to you all at the end of the day. So now let's look at it. Now we have all your information in the vendor's table and then I have invoices of of what some of you have never supplied me anything. And some of you are supplying me a lot. So you can see here, we have the vendor table. I have the invoice table. This is the invoice table. So in the invoice table, you see invoice ID, vendor ID, vendor invoice number, invoice date, invoice total, payment total. So this is the invoice date, the day that the invoice was issued. This is the invoice total of invoices, right? The invoice total and then the payment total that I have paid so far. So now you can see those two tables. So how will I relate a vendor's table to invoice table? The only way I can relate it together is if I put the unique ID, which is the invoice ID, also in the invoice table so that I can see how they are linked together. Because if I just have invoice table and associate invoice ID and all, all of the other information, and I don't have a, a, a vendor ID. It's not related. It's, every table is on their own. You see what I'm saying? It's relational, it's, it's, it's relational only when I put vendor ID on both sides. So that's the, that's the marriage between them. So, so when you see this invoice table now, the invoice ID is the primary key, right? It's always the first column. And it's always a number column. It's a numeric column. It's a, we, we, we'll get to data types. It's, it's a numeric column, you can see that we call that integer, int. Integer is the number in SQL. So, it's, it's, so we, we see invoice ID, invoice number, invoice date, and all of the good stuff. So invoice ID is the, is the primary key here. But in the, invo in the vendor table, vendor ID is the primary key because it's related to vendors, right? So now if I want to relate the two tables together, I have to now insert the vendor ID also in the invoice table. When, when it comes to the invoice table, it's got become a foreign key because that's what I'm going to be using to link two tables. So in the, in the table that actually has the information, the ID is called a primary key. In any table that you are trying to access information, it's called a, prim, a foreign key and it's the same information. I will explain it at the, the, below. So for example, Federal Express Corporation, the ID is 123, and you can see it's 123, 123, 123, 123. What does it mean? It means this guy that is called 
uh, Federal Express Corporation with ID123 has three, four invoices already. You understand? They have different invoice ID because they are different invoices and different invoice number, but they are related because this is the vendor ID that has those invoices. So that's how you will link them so that when I pull this record, it will pull all of this for him, for this person, because it belongs to this person, to him or to her, to this company. You understand? So let's 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 discuss this here. The table in the national database are related to each other through their keys, the key column. For example, vendor ID column is used to relate vendor and invoice table. This is the relation, vendor ID. That's how I can relate them, right? So the vendor ID column in the invoice table is called a foreign key. It's foreign to this. For example, if we are friends, and I said, okay, you are my friend, though I have a key, and I want you to come to my house. If I don't give you my key, a spear of my key, you can't come to my house unless you're going to break in and be caught by police. So if we're going to marry or we're going to have friendship or relationship, you need to have access to me. How? It's the only way you can have access to my house is to give you a key. So you have your own key. I have my own key. But you, I want you to come to me. I have to give you my key spare. So you can see it here. I have my keys primary to me. is my master key. But then I have to give you a, a spare of that key as a foreign key. It's not yours. It's just that I gave it to you. So if you want to access my house, you need to connect to me with that key. Are you getting it? Talk to me. Are you getting it? Yes. Uh-huh. And if you want me to connect to you as well, or another or connect, or want another table to connect to you, or even me connect to you, although we're already connected right by vendor, but you want another key to connect to you, then you have to also give them Vendor ID has to also give them their vendor ID in the other table will be foreign key to that table because that table will have its own for primary key already. So that's how it is. That's how you can relate them. Some are one to one. It can be only one record here to one record, or some of them are one to many in this case, where we have one record here and many records in here. So that's what this explains. How the column in a table are defined. So this is how we're going to look at the relation. We're going to open up this uh, SQL Server Management Studio. SQL Server Management Studio is what we are going to download, like I showed you, the files that you're going to download. When you download it and install it right, it's going to install by itself by default, and you see this. You're going to see this. When you install it, you're going to see this, and this is what we're going to be looking at. When you install it, you're going to install AP, and um, some other, so it's going to be three three databases that you're going to install. When you open it up, which I'm still going to do for you, and you open it up, you're going to see that the different tables. So you have, you're going to have database, then you're going to have different types of databases, system databases, and the one that we created ourselves. Okay? When you run the first, when you run the first file, it's going to create system database, and it's going to create this, this, this uh, software with this app, which is called Microsoft SQL Server Management Studio. When you create it, it's, when you run the second one, which is the script, it's gonna now create our own database. We already have the script for it. So when you click it and open the AP, for example, which is the account table, is the one we are looking at now. I just looked at it. I look at two tables, the, the invoice and the vendor, right? So it's in here. So you can see invoice, and then the vendor is down, but they didn't show it here. So when you click on it to open or you double click it, you see the plus. It's just like you can expand it. It's elastic. You can you can expand it and collapse it. It's like an accordion or something like that. Or tree, we call it tree view. So you click it, open up. When you open up, you see columns. These are the columns, right? So you have vendor ID. is the primary key. PK means primary key. It's an integer. It's not no. It's not no it means it's not empty. You have the vendor ID, the foreign key here is integer, which is which means is um, we're gonna look at integer and describe it. Here. It means it's, in, it's a numeric num, a char, uh, it's a numeric character and it's not known. That means it's not empty. So you see invoice number and all of that. So this is how to define or create your tables. 
this is how we do that and you can see the structure here on this other side more details about it and the properties of it so some common sql data types we have the bits that means true or false that means one or zero you know that's just true or false when you ask question true or false one or zero you use something called bits you don't, we're not going to be doing that really in this class. It's more for programming, for programmer that want to switch things off and on, on the side of program. So we have integer. We have big integer, small integer, and tiny integer. Integer uh, value of various sizes. Mostly in this class, we're going to be using integer, which is just number, just means number. Money, we have money, which is currency, right? We have decimal, which is like decimal for real. We have float. Float is a type of decimal as well. With a, you can do approximation on it, okay? We have date time. We have date time. So that means if we have a date stamp, like today's date, right now, it's 7.50 p.m. Eastern time in my zone, here. And when I say date time, it's gonna show today's date. Today is April 7th, 2012, and it's gonna show me the date and the time on the start, on the on this data, you understand? So when I say small data and time, it's going to show the date, the time, the micro milliseconds of that time. So that when sometimes we want to keep track of things, you want to know exactly, exactly, exactly when it happened. Then you can use all of these things to actually time stamp and say, this is exactly this particular time when this thing happened. An attack happened to the database or something happened or there's a terrorist or whatever. You want to know exact time. So we can, and why do we want to know that? So we can link things together. Sometimes you want to link, okay, this happened on this server, then at this time it moves to this server for investigational purposes. That's why Tutu is my student from my three, that she has done three security, cyber security classes with me, different ones. And you've seen a lot of attack happening. You see a lot of logs you know, keeping track of logs of what happens and how to relate them together. So that's why we have timestamps. And also, because we do a lot of logs on here in this, in, in, in databases, we need to, to do timestamp on the back of those logs, you understand? Then we have character. Character is just a text file. It's a string. When you say string of letters, that's a text file, okay? And the number in ASCII character. And then we see N, N car. Uh, N car or N bar car is also uh, a string of text, which are letters in Unicode character. Don't have to worry about all of that because mostly we use car or var car. Okay? And there are differences between, and we'll get to talk about that later when we start talking about strings function. So car is different from var car. And when you're using things like you know the exact number of texts that that, that that text we have. For example, when you say gender, male or female, in the olden days, it's only male or female, but now it has changed. I don't know, maybe sometimes undisclosed, unidentifiable, I don't know. The word has changed, but I don't know. So, but that's what we use car for, because we know exactly what it's gonna be. It might be M, F, Undisclosed, unidentified, whatever they can use car for it because we know it's just one, it's just one letter. You understand? But if it's bar car, that means maybe up to fifty, up to two hundred and fifty-six for for a very long name or very long address, and here we use bar car. So that's the difference between the two. But we'll get to see more of that as we go. So these are data types. So data type that as assigned to a column determine the type and size of the information. Okay, so we're gonna continue. Okay, um, hmm. where am I stopped? Oh, dearest.
You can it's, see you. Where are you? Yeah, see me now. Okay. Yes. So can you see the can you see the book you, the book now moving? I think your grandpa is still blank. Okay. Okay, so we're well, welcome back. Uh huh. So yeah. we're looking at we're looking at yeah we we discussed and asking. So so you see it's not difficult for people that kind of run away and trying to see oh it's difficult it's not. So if you have friends that are scared of tech or, or database because they have the word data, they, they pick it and run away. Tell them to come next week. They can still join us. After next week, I can't take nobody, but they can still join us next week. It's not difficult. Ah, Mr. Okay? I think uh, Richard yes. asked a question some minutes back. Uh, what's okay, the difference is between the administrator and the engineer? Okay, yeah, I didn't see that. Okay, an administrator is the person that administers the database. They create the whole structure. They create the database, they set it up. Um, they set up the environment, they, they create the users, they give them privileges, things like that. They, they, they administer the database, they, they make sure they create backups, recovery, all of that. They are just administer database. They don't necessarily have to create, write the queries this deep. But an administrator is probably part two of what we are doing now, if you want to go that way. Because an administrator is somebody that knows about SQL very well and decides to start becoming an administrator. You understand? A SQL engineer or developer, if you start from there and decide to continue further that way or decide to be an admin. You understand? But um, it's, it's very good to be an engineer because all you have to do is just use the to write your query, but at the same time, we're gonna learn how to how to have this database because we're gonna learn how to create our own tables. We're gonna create create our own database from scratch. We learn all of those things, and we create our own tables and be able to write queries and do all of those things on our own. You understand? So we wish is a plus. Okay. So I'll teach you all of that. You're not gonna only be scripting. You can create your own environment and run with it. Okay. I hope Richard can hear me. Yes, I can hear you. Okay. So that's what it is. You learn all of those. And um, yeah, so a column can also be defined with a default value, like I said, a value that will be there as soon as you create it, so that it will not say no. Then the value is used if another value isn't provided when the row is added. So as soon as the, the, the role is added to it, you are adding data, and I say it's not null, it has to be zero or 20 or whatever I decide the default, the, the value, the default the initial value, the default value is to populate the, the rows by it so that it will not be empty in case we're trying to do some calculation or something. So the column can also be defined as identity column. An identity column is a numeric column whose value is generated automatically when a row is added to the table, okay? So you can say so this is a special identity, it's unique, and it's numeric, it can be there automatically. Okay, so most of you that work in the bank, that works in the production company, you get to see that you have all of these things at the back. Most of you can even work for your company now if you want, because you, they have all of this section, database and all of that, you know. When you start talking at the job now about data, they was like, where did you learn all of this? When, what are you doing, boy? What are you doing, girl? That you know all of this, you know. So that's powerful. So how relational database compares to other data models? So now we're going to look at different types of comparison, Compar uh, comparison between relational database and conventional file system. So you have um, feature definition. So each program that uses the file must define the file and the layout of the record within the file. So we have table rows, columns, and all of that defined within the database and can be accessed by name, right? So we, we also do maintenance. This maintenance, um, if the definition of a file changes, each program that uses the file must be modified. 
So when you when 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 you have a, a file name that you change, then you have to change the file name everywhere, isn't it? That's the that's the that's the conventional table. If I, I if I call my file, I need to choose file, and the, whatever file that's referenced to that file, if I change, if I connect another file that's looking for that file in the program, if I change I need to 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 change this file, will it find it again? It won't, right? It will be giving me error. I can't find this file. What is going on? Then I have to say, oh, I've changed it, so I have to change it. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Then, validity check. Each program that updates a file must include code to check the valid data. Can include check for valid data. So this is what happened in a conventional file, and this is what, what happened in database, relational database file. So in a conventional file, like a file that is on your desk, maybe a folder that has some file inside it, or in a file that is just a filing cabinet or whatever, you want to validate that this file that I said is there is must be the regular, the kind of file or data. You understand? So now, when I key data in, it's garbage in, garbage out. If I put in garbage, I'll get garbage, right? Isn't it? So if, if I said, blah, 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 okay, my name, my address, and all of that, my address, if I put X, 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 Y, 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 because I don't want to put my name. When I pull it, what will I get? X, 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 Y, 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 on my address, on my, on my, I want to peel, print an address label. Is that not what it will give me? Yeah. So that means I have to validate the kind of data that is put in, that customer put it into my database. So that means when they're filling in the form in the front end, I will check. That's why sometimes you fill out some form and you say you invalid data. You give you error. Or it said, this field is required. And it give you X, 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 and say, check out the required field before you can submit. Oh, many people have seen that before. And you don't fill form online. Yeah. Judith, you are quiet like quiet. What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> I hope you guys can hear me. I'm listening. So, when you fill out form online, right? Fill out form for some certain purposes. You fill out the form and you click submit. Maybe you're filling out form for the for clinic, for hospital, for loan. When you fill out the form, it maybe it might be a form that says name, address. Then well, why are you filling out this form? You know what I'm saying? Who, who, who doesn't yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you fill out those forms, right? it has all of that. Sometimes we click submit, it will tell you, it will show an error, maybe with red or something. Mm -hmm. Why is it doing that? Because it's doing validity check. Because if you allow some customer to, some customer don't like to fill forms. If you allow them to go scot free, guess what? They will now fill those forms out. They will just leave it blank. And it's going to affect the database because. It will not. Yeah, it's doing its thing. It's crazy thing. It's like it does on the first day. Maybe. Can you see it moving? No. Uh, okay, it just came. Is it, does it show anything? Yes. Yeah. Is it moving now? Yes. Yes. Okay, thank you. So, also, relationship. Each program must provide for, must be provided for, let me show recording. Okay, provided for an enforced relationship between files. So relationship is foreign key and primary key reinforced relationship. Data access, input, output, operation, target a specific record in a file based on its relative position in the file in the neighborhood and uh, most of the time so some students be logging in and out in and out all day i was like oh my god they are going through it in their in their login so please um bear with them them very simple people okay so um so so also in the database side a program can use sql to access selected data in one or more in one 
uh, or more tables of the database. You saw how we access data. We look at the vendors table and the invoice table, link them together and access the data, right? So these are just simple comparison that we're doing. A compression region database and other databases. There are different types of databases. There are hierarchical database. There's a network database. There are regional database. In all of these, regional database is much more um, better. One to many, one to one, many to many. Ad hoc relationship that are defined on the run right there is very important. They are supported relationship. Data access, like we mentioned, maintenance also is very important. Program can be used without modification when the definition of a table has changed. When the definition of table has changed, actually uh, set to um, accepted because they are not ad coded. We'll see all of this as we go in the, in the class. Don't worry about that. So this is the history of SQL. We are just doing history. We are just doing introduction. We are not really getting into anything yet. So this is the brief history how everything else started. You can read more about that. 1970 up, up until continually changing. So how known the SQL, uh, standard SQL helps you to, the most basic SQL statements are, are the same for all SQL dialects. And then once you know, learn SQL, one SQL dialect, you can easily learn any other dialect. SQL is SQL, that's all. Okay, you don't have to worry, this is all the same. So a comparison between Oracle DB2, database 2, MySQL, SQL Server, they all use SQL. And this is how everything got started as well for them. So an introduction to SQL statement. This is how a SQL statement works. So we have something we call data manipulation language. We used to manipulate data, manipulate it. And there's something called data definition language. You use it to create something, to alter or to drop. So for data manipulation, you have things like select. Select means you are, you are retrieving data from one or more tables. Like we saw invoice table and we saw um, vendor table. We can match the two together and pull data from them. We, we call them retrieve data or we can retrieve from only one, or two, or three, or four. That's retrieve, we use select. Insert means we are adding, right? Adding one or more new rows to a table. That means you are adding to the table that's already existing. You're adding record to them. Hmm? So update means you are making changes, right? Like the name connotes. You are making changes to one or more table. Delete means you are deleting that record. You don't want it anymore. So you are manipulating table. You manipulate table using data manipulation language. Then we are creating table or altering the table structure or dropping the table structure. So we use data definition because we are defining it. So we have create database. We can create different objects of the database. So the first thing uh, we do is we create. Yes. Sorry, um, you've been mentioning or it's been stated that you, the reference is only to uh, rows. How about columns? Yeah, columns, columns are, okay, for example, when I mentioned, okay, let's do a practical example so that you can be involved because I've, I've been saying it. So let's say, for example, you want in this class, right? We want to create a school. We are in a school now. We want to create a school database. In the school database, we have what, what kind of tables are we going to create to that database? Mention what tables? Student. Right? And student. And then what else? Uh, ID classes. Uh, courses, right? As IT classes. Grades. Yeah. Uh, Great. Uh -huh. What else? Teachers, right? Okay. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So, student table. In the student table. Mm -hmm. In the student table. What are the things that you want to know about students? The name. The name. name. Mm -hmm. Course. Um, gender. Gender. Uh -huh. Student ID. Mm -hmm. Student ID, right? Yes. Yes. 
given phone number, right? Yeah. Okay. Those are the columns. Oh. Those are the those are the fields. Okay, those are the columns, those are the fields. And inside it now, start putting your name, tie your number one. You are a record, you are a row. I said Judith number two. Judith is number two, is unique ID is two, that's the primary key. She's a record, she's a row on that table. I say Risha, she is number three. You know, I was giving you that example, but maybe it didn't sink yet. Ready now. Okay. And also, how many, how many courses does Tayo has in this school? So I can now link you to the course table. So when I link student and courses, so now you're gonna have student ID, right? In the course table, because course we have course ID, course name, maybe course location. But I also now put another column that is called student ID so that I can link the student to the course. You understand? But in the course table now, the student ID will become a primary key because the course already has its own primary key. No, it will become a foreign key. The student ID in the course table is a foreign key to the first course table because it already has its own primary key that is called the course ID. Does it make sense? Yeah, yeah. The course table, the course ID is the primary key. If I want to link it, do a relationship between the two. We're, going, we're still going to say all of this. Is, we are just building. We are just building momentum gradually. You have not even done anything. It's introduction. Okay. You understand? You still see everything virtually. You will still do it. So don't worry. I'm just trying to explain that to you so you can, you know, start absorbing it and start assimilating as we go. So now we can create database. We can create tables. We can create indexes. These are different objects. This is what we use data definition language for. We can change change the structure of the table by using alter with anything you want to change as a structure. So when you when you create database, you are changing the structure. You are creating a new structure, right? When you create table, you are creating a new structure that doesn't exist. You you have to do data definition before you can do manipulation. What you can't do, you can't manipulate. Because manipulation is like you are making changes, you are you are manipulating something. If you don't build it, you can't manipulate it, isn't it? Can you manipulate what you don't didn't build? You can't manipulate anything that you didn't. Build. If I don't build the tables, so if I don't build database and build tables, I cannot select from it. I can't restart. I can't update. I can't delete. You know that. You know that, right? Yeah. Uh huh. So that's how it is. So and if I don't need it anymore, I can drop the database itself. I can drop the table. I can drop anything I created. So this is called data definition, okay? Okay, typical statement for writing database objects. So, okay, so you can see example, what this we are still going to do. A statement that creates a new table. You can say, create database AP. That's what you have to say. Create database AP, we create a database called AP. Then we can say, a statement that creates a new table. We can say create table invoice. Then we define what the table will look like. We'll still go to, we'll still see this as we go. We just, this is our example. You have to name the, whatever name you want it to be, the data type, not null, maybe it's an identity key, identity and it's a primary key. You define all of them. It's just, I'm just showing you how it's gonna be comma, then you continue. We're gonna do this like in week three or something. So you don't have to worry. A statement that add a new column to the table. You can, you want to add a new column to the table you already created. We told you that when you want to make changes to a table that you already created, you use alter table. For example, invoice table, alter table, invoice, add this particular column, and the value is, uh, the, the, the definition is money, and it's not null. So it, it can't be null. Money has to be zero or whatever. So this is how you can create with scripts your tables, or you can also create while just clicking some buttons. I also show you how to click buttons and just create. You don't have to write scripts. But I want to know, I want you to know the scripts so that you don't have to just depend on clicking buttons. You understand? Because all of this, you just can click, 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 and pretty much do it on the system, on the, on the database server. 
But you don't have to. I need you to know the script as well so that you can do both ways. You know? So you can, this is, that, this is how it scripts. So what some of the ways the scripts will look like. You define all the columns. For example, if you're a student, student ID, student, student name, student address, phone number, blah, 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 and define the kind of data type it is, and then maybe it's not or not, not, or command and next one, next one. It's very easy and straightforward. Don't have to worry. So, so you can do all of that. And also you can reference it. Okay, reference pretty much like, okay, for this particular example now, that means this is a, this, that means you are referencing this and saying, okay, on the vendor, this is the invoice table, right? So that means I'm saying in the vendor table, the relationship between a vendor table and the invoice table is the vendor ID here. So I'm saying I'm referencing the vendor table with this vendor ID. I'm just what saying it so that you will know that when I start to join them, you will know that that is the reason why it's there. It's joining to another table in another, in the table called vendor. The vendor ID is a join, it's a primary key. This is just saying that this is a, I mean, it's a foreign key here. It's a reference. It's, it's, not, it's not like it's, it has any membership here, just a reference to another table, which is a vendor table. This is an invoice table. Are you following me? Yes. This way, I can't see Judy's face, and I can't see her head shaking. You're making me think if she doesn't understand. <laughs> Can I ask her something quickly? Yes. When you ah, think, are you following? Well, because I can't see the face. Uh, no what are the functions of uh, these uh, comma and the semicolons? This is just introduction. We'll get to the meat and meat balls of it. So is my screen moving? Yes. You can see the column, invoice ID, invoice and vendor ID. When This is connected to a, a table called terms. You see that when we get to a database. I think it's because you live in a, you live in an area like in no man's land or something. Oh God, this girl, she's been saying this word of thing, so don't even bring it. <laughs> I've been in word of for seventeen years. I'm, I've been doing classes. I don't have problem with it. It's just that sometimes it um, it hacks up like that. Okay, anyways, so let's just continue. Provided you guys can. Yeah, you're using you're using Buhari's internet. <laughs> no right. Okay, so let's continue. So now this is how we can retrieve data from uh, invoice. So you can see select statement that retrieve and store selected columns and row from the invoice table. So you can see uh, select invoice number, which is this right comma. That means we are continuing. We've not finished. Invoice date, which is this right comma. Invoice total comma. Payment total. Then credit total. Comma, we are continuing. You can see what I'm trying to show you here is that you can do calculation on the calculation field. Simple like you are doing arithmetic. 
So you can see invoice total minus payment total minus credit total as balance due. We're still going to do this in class. I'm just showing you as balance due. So you're going to create another column. You're going to retrieve data that's going to say balance. It's going to do some calculation right there and, and, and show it to you here. So you can see an invoice total, payment, and invoice date. That's the result. So we're looking at the results. Eh? And then um, invoice total, payment total, credit total. And we did the, the math for all of them. So we, we subtract this from this from this. This is the answer. So 8.31 minus 0, 0.00 minus 0, 0.00 is this. So we see the calculation. It's doing calculation right there. From invoices. Where invoice total minus payment total minus credit total is greater than zero. So it's saying that whenever the balance is greater than zero, show it. Any balance that is zero, do not show it on this. So the where clause is a flitter, so that it doesn't bring everything. But we still do that in class. I'm just showing these are examples. Order by invoice date. So the invoice date is how it's going to order. So that means it's going to start with the lowest date all the way to the biggest date. So the order by means you want to order. It's like you want to start from smallest to biggest or biggest to smallest. We'll still do all of those things in class. These are examples. How to join one or more tables. If you are doing two or more tables, then you use a join condition. Okay? So this, this you use, when you join two tables together, we use joins. Something we call joins. We're still gonna do that like in fifth week of class. Okay? And also you can how to add update or delete from in the table. We just getting your appetite wet, getting you ready. Some of the things that you can see. So you can add a row to a table by doing something we call insert. Insert into table invoice. And then you name the column that you want to insert into. And then you provide the values with commas. And it's inserted straight into the tables. We do all of that. You can make this to tables. Put a put a thirty five point eighty nine inside it. Where invoice number is this? So only do it for this invoice number. So that means in this particular invoice number, put the credit total, change whatever is in there, change it to this number. version of Excel. <laughs> it's Excel. It's like Excel, but it's like upgraded. Exactly. That's what I was saying. For some of you that know how to do Excel, this is like Excel, mm. but it's an upgraded Excel. Okay. Fine. Mm, it's like upgraded. Most of you know how to use Excel, right? Yeah, just uh, intermediate, not too much. It is um, by Microsoft as well. So it's oh, okay. kind of that kind of Excel that we brought to a database. Because Excel is also for data. Yeah. You can pretty much ship everything inside Excel and dump it in the database and it will fit in. Okay. Um, you can see my screen moving, right? Yeah. So you can update, you can delete, and so on and so forth. Okay. So that's pretty much what it is. And there are a few more. Um, and you can create the views and stuff. So I won't worry about that. We get to that in class and you can even, even read through. And also two column option for assessing SQL. You can access SQL server. If you are doing .NET application, like I showed you earlier, you can use ADO.NET. You don't have to worry about that. If you are doing Java, you have to do a JDB and also Java drivers to, to connect to the database. So the Java programmers knows very well about that. And um, and this is how it works for .NET connection. You know, the, 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 you don't have to worry about that. Data read that, select command, then connection, the database, and you can do insert, delete, or update command. You can do all of that. And you can write visual, visual basic code. It's not you, but the programmers can do all of that and connect, and they can write some script. These are very really straightforward, and these are the things that a programmer will write. So that's why you see me doing coding, because 
as a programmer, I have to know how to write my code as well as know how to write database code because we don't have the luxury. Most of these organizations, we have the, the DBA or whatever, but you have to write your own script. How many times will I be running to a DBA to write my script for me to connect the database? I don't, so I have to write it. So imagine you coming straight fresh from college and then you have to learn if you are doing uh, SQL, I mean, if you are doing the AASP.NET, maybe C Sharp, you have to learn C Sharp and all the components of C Sharp, which is programming language. Then you have, that's the, that's the language. Then you have to learn HTML to create your forms. Then you have to learn stylish it to understand how to style it. Then you have to learn how to connect to database. Then you have to learn about all this and I'm teaching you yourself. You have to learn it. So that's why people try to get to tech and they want to go through programming and say, don't even try. Don't start from basic knowing. This is just one thing that I have to know. One thing. All the other ones are extra that I have to know as well. Because you went to college before computer science doesn't mean nothing. It doesn't mean anything because you are not special in any area. They will not teach you deeply. I'm also an agile professor. They will teach us, we teach them based on the syllabus they gave us. It's not deep like this. I don't spend three hours with any student. I only spend one hour per week. One hour. Everything is, is recorded. Everything is in a book. They go and study. That's, that's what they did for them. Although I take time to help them and all that, but it's not like this one I'm sitting with you talking for one hour. Three hours doesn't happen in any university. Max is one hour, 30 minutes. Mostly it's one hour. That's it. Everybody's gone. And we give them more work. I've not seen anybody that's spending four hours with any student or three hours. Every, every, even, even people like me, they spend, if they spend four hours with you or three hours, that means you're having four weeks class. I see this class online. This same class I'm teaching for 12 weeks. Nobody will do it. I see the same class online four weeks. They spend four hours for four weeks. How many hours is that? I'm spending three hours for, for 12 weeks. Nobody will do it. Nobody. I've seen it. So take it, don't take it lightly or play with it as thinking I just want to make noise or shout. Take this thing with all your veins and your bone and your and the blood in you. It's, it's, it doesn't come this easy. So I know what I'm spilling out. Okay? So take it very, very seriously. And all these resources that you have, if anybody is teaching you, most people don't have my background. You see that? They are just DBA. They don't have anything about. They don't know anything about coding. Or that's what I always tell my students. They don't know anything about coding, so they can't show you the side of coding. They just know about DBA. But if I do DBA, I do coding, I do scripting. Based on my background, nobody's gonna tell you about all those things I've shown you. All those video about um, security or uh, data server. Nobody does that. But because of my background, I put all of this thing together. I start thinking in my head, okay, how will I make it different? So that's what you see me doing. So when I tell you anything, take it to the bank and don't play with it. Don't play with it. Okay, so before we go, I'll quickly show us the Visual Studio. I'll take you straight to the Visual Studio. And that's what we're going to be doing. So I'm going to share that screen. So this is, I hope you can see my screen, right? This is my management studio, and that's what you guys are going to be creating. When you create it, we're going to log into it. When you download those files, so there will be two files, right? And even before I come here, right, let me try and, um, let me try and show you certain things. Let me see if I can pull that data. The, the forms that you're gonna, um, the record that you're gonna be using. So follow this closely, follow it closely. I know you will, so that's cool. Because I remember Sheyi and, um, Sheyi and um, Richard, they've been waiting for this class since. Mm -hmm. I said, oh, we have- For so long. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, well,
this is serious. So please take it seriously. Oh. This when you if you take this class seriously, you will never be hungry ever. Forever. I'm glad. Yeah. I'm serious. Tutu is there. Tutu knows how many people are mentored and she knows that if I tell you something, don't even think about it. Just do it. Because that's how it is. You can I can bet with it, you know? Even though we don't have to bet, but uh, let me see. I want to show you two files, right? That you're gonna be pulling. And um it's gonna be I'm trying to find it. If I can't find it now, I will, I will, I will, the instruction will be there, Sha. It will be, it's already on Yama. It's already on Yama. So when you just click it, you see it will say, uh, the first one, it will say, install this first. Then you see the second, it say, install this second. All you have to do is just click it, download it, and install it. All the instruction will be there to guide you. So I'll just let that be. Don't let me waste our time with that. So we can be all done soon. I'm opening up the, the management studio because at the end of the day, when we install it, it will be here. So connect to it. So after we have installed this, right? Imagine management studio. Um, your management studio will be. Okay, let me show you. Okay, my your management studio will be on your start menu. When you finish installing two files, two files, right? You will install three files, but the first file is the is the one that will create the um it will create the management studio. The second one will create the environment, and then the third one will be the file that you will just install the information on here. This which is the file that we're gonna be using to 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 record. So in here you will see this file, the AP, the example, and the product order. These are the ones that we're gonna be using in the class. Okay. So um what I wanted to show you is that when this is installed, right? The different things that you need to know. This is called Microsoft SQL Server Management Studio. And you can connect to different object explorer, or you can disconnect. So I'm connected now, which is this particular connection. That's how I got in in the first place. So when you install this, right? Let me close that for a minute. You can see my screen, right? Okay, good. So when you finish installing, it's gonna be on your start menu. It might be on recent, recently added. It might be the one on recently added or it might be under Microsoft SQL here. Like it might say uh -huh, Microsoft SQL Server 218. You see that. So you go under here, see it said that shows like some tools. Microsoft SQL Server Management. You click on it, it opens up. That's how you find it. When it opens up, now we can start using it. So it's gonna come like this. So you're gonna see database engine. That's what it's gonna um, pick. Then you click on server name. It's gonna give you the name of your data on your, of your computer, whatever your name of your desktop is. By default, that name you're gonna get desktop, whatever, whatever. Just make sure you select that. And then it's gonna say window authentication. That's fine. That means whatever we use to log on to your Windows is what is going to assume. And it's going to allow you to log in because you already logged in. But there are different types of other authentication that we'll talk about when we start talking about the cloud, like SQL Server authentication. We'll talk about that later. If you want to connect this computer to the cloud, you use SQL Server authentication and give them information about your cloud environment to get it. But right now we just use the default, which is window authentication, and we click connect. And boom, you are in. So when you come in in the first time, you will not have any many databases like this. We don't have all of this. We only have system 
database and database snapshot. You can close and open all of this. Everything here you can close and open. This is how it works. It's like hierarchical. Okay, so you will not have any of this, but you will now, now have to install all of this by going to File, Open. You can say File, Open, and then you will now go to File, Open. You go to uh, Files or Folder. Depending on where you put your information, you can say File. It will now go and look for that file. Whatever file you install might be on your Download Folder. Most of the time it will be, and which is this? SQL all files. That's what I just downloaded from Yama, right? You click on it, you click on it, and you see all the SQL Server database is what you want. Then you have to extract all of this. So I just say Control A, or just pick it one by one, and just say Open. I will open everything to this app. So you open all of the three for me. I can do it one by one, I can do it once. If I want to do it when I was just a control A, it's to copy everything, then it just pull it here. Um, it's very straightforward. So you say file, open, files, and then just or just check it, check it, check it, and say open. Okay, just check all of them one by one and click on open. Then it opens up. All you have to do here is just execute them one by one. As you click on this thing, execute. This one will create what? It will create the product order table, which I have. This second one will create what? It will create a table called example, which I have. This third one will create what? A AP table, which I have. All you have to do is click on there and click on execute. It will run for you and it will create three tables for you. AP example and execute. What I want you to do is that this week, when you all meet, I want you to do, to do all of this thing together, run it together, and see how you will be able to. You can you can install before you make sure you install your environment first. I'll send you all the material to get installing your environment. I want you to first of all download those instructions, download it from Yama into your environment. Then we'll, you will set it up. If you have any issues with it, call me. And then, uh, when you actually, I want you to meet first of us and try to do it, and see if you guys can get ahead with it, helping yourselves. Yeah, I have so a after what? Because you know Microsoft and Mac, they don't work together. It's just it's always gonna it's always been like that. But I will see if they have a flavor of Mac. But I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I don't think so because it is based on Windows environment and um, Mac doesn't run up. So you only have MacBook. Yes. Is that uh, Shay? Yes. Yeah, that's what I always tell everybody. If you're trying to do IT classes don't depend on Mac because Mac is not supported like that in programming or database or whatever. Because even even cybersecurity, some some things don't run on Mac because Mac is kind of newer and they decide to have their own where they have to because it's trademark. Um, so so you probably need to get a smaller. It doesn't have to be new. Go on go on Amazon. Anything i5 is fine. i5 is probably going to spend like two hundred dollars. So you can have one that is just for your IT classes. Because if not, you have a lot of headache. It, even when I was a programmer, that's why I don't like a lot of apps. I just decided to change. I mean, I don't like a lot of anything Mac because it gave me a lot of, it gave us a lot of headache and they don't support the user. We don't support Mac. Oh, God. oh my God. So that's why I'm not a fan of anything Mac or anything iPad. I just literally changed to iPhone. I don't do it. I just do Samsung or something Microsoft that. Come on. So if you can, hey, eh, try and get a small Windows machine, and then you can you can use it. So you can just go online, and Google something i5. i5 is 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 cheaper. i7 is also okay, but i5 is cheaper. Right. It can be for doesn't have to be new. So you just use it for this. All right. Thank you.
You're welcome. So, so you just work on that and um, and install it. So we'll be doing more of this next week. So we have file, edit, view, query. We'll be able to understand all of this. So just click on execute for each of them, and it will execute. And all these scripts, all these tables, we still get to visit them. If they already did everything for us, and we inside the data everything. If you like, you can just check. After you've all, you already did it, so that's already created. Then you can check what they did. But well, don't don't start looking around because you can delete something by mistake and then start giving you error. After you've all created the three of them, then you can look around and see what kind of script is here. Okay. So before we go on, I want to ask. So, which day are you guys gonna meet? Be meeting weekly. Today is Wednesday now. So you probably you guys probably need to meet like Sunday or yeah Sunday or Saturday. Why? Because you're gonna have enough time to to look at the material and study yourself. Then you all come together and meet and discuss what you have questions on and something like that. Which day do you guys are deciding to meet? Talk to me now. We finish class. Interactive now. Uh, why no Monday? As in the weekend, I don't know. Yeah, Monday is fine. Whatever, I don't care. Whatever, I'm not gonna be there. It's you guys. Whatever you guys want, talk. Let's see. So, um, is the weekend not better? I mean, we all work Monday through Friday, right? Mm -hmm. You need one hour in the most mostly in the evening, maybe. Around seven or six, I don't know. Um, you guys probably need to work together because I know most people they most people work from home now, so it might be more flexible. But people that go to work, you all need to consider yourselves. So which day is good for you all? You all. Sunday is good. Sunday evening. Huh? Sunday. Which? Huh? Sunday. Sunday around the same time. Yeah. Which time that where I have my club house on Sunday? I, I'm not I, I mean I, <laughs> and Richard will not be here. So Richard is always <laughs> uh, I, I mean it, seven o'clock, eight o'clock. Let me even take that back. Club all start at four on Sunday, we'll be finished by six. So you can do six or seven. That's fine. <laughs> So what are you? Yeah, you guys can do Sunday at six if you guys want or seven. Is that good with everybody? Which day is good for you guys? Stop, stop, stop. Any objections? No, huh? no Sunday at six. Okay. No objections. Okay. 